The second module in DeFi infrastructure takes a, a much more detailed look at the foundations of decentralized uh, finance. So we'll talk about blockchain, which I've just uh, introduced, um, cryptographic hashing, cryptocurrency in a little more detail, smart contracts, oracles, stable coins, and a little more on decentralized applications. So that's where we're heading. So let's start with, uh, with blockchain. And let me give a, a basic uh, introduction. So blockchain, again invented by Haber and Starnetto in 1991, is basically a software protocol. That's like one way to think about it. And there's no, there's no one blockchain. This is, this is an idea that is a very general idea. So, so Bitcoin's blockchain is different than the Ethereum blockchain. And potentially there's thousands of different blockchains. But they do have commonalities in terms of basic items, like allowing multiple parties to operate under shared assumptions and data. And this is key, without trusting each other. Okay, and that's much different than centralized finance. There needs to be some level of trust. The trust here is within the technology, not the different parties. Okay, so the data that we're talking about for blockchain could be anything. So it could be a transaction where I transfer some Ethereum to somebody else, but it could be location, destination information, could be supply chain uh, details. This is a very general uh, technology. And the idea is that you've got this record, it's tamper-proof, and it's, it's open, and people can see it. I give an example uh, in my course. Uh, you go into the grocery store, uh, you see some lettuce that's supposedly organic, it's got a QR on it, you scan it, check a blockchain construct that tells you when it was picked, where it was picked, whether the farm's organic, every single hop on the supply chain, and how long it's been on the shelf at the grocery store. So again, this is a very general uh, idea. So uh, part of the, the basic structure is the, the blocks and the chain that links the blocks. So we'll have to go through in some detail um, as to what that means. But in the bottom line, it's just really easy to do an audit. So that means you can trace all of the transactions. You can figure out the balance uh, of, of any address. So it's very, very straightforward uh, technology. So here is the uh, the article that I mentioned, the Haber and Sternata, in, in 1991. And um, there is a lot of kind of misunderstandings that people think that blockchain was invented by Satoshi Nakamoto. It's just not the case. The idea was invented by Haber and Sternata. So let me try to describe what's going on with a blockchain. So it's a ledger. Think of it as a spreadsheet. Indeed, sometimes I pitch the idea in the following way. Uh, Excel is a spreadsheet, unless you got 200 rows in the spreadsheet. Well, um, anybody could go edit, let's say, row 100 and change the spreadsheet. In a blockchain technology, you can add, but you can't edit. So you can add row 201, but you can't go and change row 100. But it's different. It's not just a single spreadsheet that I've got on my desktop. This is a distributed ledger. So uh, this is what uh, a distributed network uh, looks like. And notice that there's no single point of failure. That 
if some of the nodes in the network go offline or are corrupted, it doesn't really impact the network because there's so many copies of this ledger. There is extreme redundancy. Uh, the other um, attributes are transparency, which we've talked about, and immutability. So again, you can add that, think of the, the row 201 into the ledger, but you can't go and edit the history. Now, I say you can't do it, but I need to prove to you that you actually uh, can't do it. So this is what it looks like. So these are some blocks, and uh, the cryptographic security is, is quite elegant. So we've got transactions in these blocks, and, and basically look at the arrows connecting the last line of one block to the next line of the next block. So the last line of the block to the far uh, left is connected to the first line of the block in the middle. Okay, so that is going to be important uh, for us. So, so basically, that last line of the block is, think of it as a fingerprint that's unique to all of the content of the block. So the block has got many transactions in it. And then there's a fingerprint that we call a cryptographic hash that's unique to all of that data. So what I mean, to be clear, if I alter, even in the most subtle way, the data, the fingerprint changes. So the key thing here is the fingerprint for that uh, first block on the far left is repeated as the first line of the next block. Okay, so the record, the fingerprint or cryptographic hash of the block on the far left is repeated in the first line of the middle block. Okay, and then when uh, the middle block is filled up with transactions, similar thing happens. We get a new fingerprint that takes all of the data, all of the transactions, including that fingerprint at the very top. And again, that's unique to the second block, and it is repeated uh, for at the very top of the block on the right. Okay, so this is why it's called a block chain. There are blocks, and the chain is the link between the last line and the first line. This commonality that puts them all together. And hopefully you can see already um, the beauty of this idea. So, for example, if it was the case that the block on the left somehow got corrupted, well, if it's corrupted, then the fingerprint at the bottom is going to change. And then it won't match the first line of the next block. The network sees this and says, well, the chain is broken. Let's replace that block on the left with a copy that actually does work. So this is really important property that uh, gives this technology uh, its immutability. If we need to add to the blockchain, we add a new block. We don't go and edit uh, the past. And um, you can see all of these blocks for Bitcoin going back to the very first block, which is called the Genesis block. Same thing for Ethereum. Everything is wide open on the internet. Anybody, anybody can download a complete copy of the blockchains. So um, what about security? And the, the key idea here is the cryptographic hash or the fingerprint as I've called it. Okay, so if there is any alteration. So I say that you can't edit a, uh, a blockchain, but let's suppose that I actually do. 
Remember I said that anybody can download the, let's say, the Bitcoin blockchain. So let's say I do that. And let's say that uh, I change a block. I can do that, just edit it. But again, the same problem will occur. That when I edit the block, the, the, the cryptographic hash at the bottom will change. And when that changes, the network sees that the block has been corrupted. And there'll be a search to find the block that actually fits. So it's futile. It's futile to actually try to change because if there's any corruption, it's immediately seen because the chain is broken and the block will be replaced. And there's plenty of copies of the uncorrupted uh, blockchain on uh, across all of the nodes in the network.